for the regular subscribers to my channel. Uh, this is not photography related, but in case you're curious, I'm recording this with my Sony A6100 and the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. So I wanted to go over this snow blower that I bought, and um, it's obviously summer and no snow. But this just happened to be the time that I had the money to buy it, and um, I wanted to go over some things that that I've been uh, wanting to find out myself, but I didn't see this on other videos I've seen on YouTube about this particular snowblower or ones like it. Uh, so I actually had this factory ship this to me. They're not available in the um, dealers right now because um, it's summer, and my understanding is they start making these the winter products around late July, and then they might be available in late August, September sometime to, to actually start buying these. But they had some leftover stock. I assume this is a 2020 model, 2020, and um, straight from Cub Cadet, and they delivered it on a crate. And it was in a box, you know, with the, the wood on the bottom, and, you know, the, there's a piece on the top, that you know, the wood part on the top. This one right here. This was on the top, and this was on the bottom. And this box is upside down. Basically, you just cut where the line is, and uh, you, you just pull the whole um, cardboard off the top of it. And the snowblower would be sitting on top of the crate, and you go ahead and put it together, and then you just drive it off the crate. I mean, you could drag it off of there anyway, but it's only about 300 pounds, and it's pretty easy to move. So what I usually do, let me just explain. I've got a couple hundred feet of concrete driveway that goes down to the road, but then I also have gravel here and it's not completely level you know kind of goes up and down and there's little dips in it and so on so this is a real pain to do anything with when it snows much but what I usually do and what's been working really well until last year and it just drove me crazy and I had finally had to break down break down to get a snow blower I usually use my backpack blower which people wouldn't normally think of uh, but this is a steel BR600 Magnum I'm sorry if there's much wind noise I'm trying to block that um, not using my external mic right now but this is a, a powerful backpack blower and I could blow a couple inches of snow with this really easily I mean you can move a brick literally blow a brick around with this on the concrete so it's got a lot of power problem is if you get more than a couple inches where it's a really wet snow even if it's an inch or two you can still blow it off with the with the snow blower or the backpack blower and it's really easy and this whole driveway you know couple hundred feet you can be done in 15 minutes with this you know especially if it's a really light snow I mean that light fluffy dry snow uh, but this doesn't always you, know, you just can't always use that if it gets too much um, so I'm just gonna go over the snow blower in general and um, just explain what everything is and I want to go over some things that I noticed from the factory that was wrong uh, things that I had to adjust and fix myself and um, hoping the dealer if they sell these at the dealer. Well, obviously they sell them at the dealer, but I'm hoping the dealer would take the time to go through these and um, check all these little things because straight out of the box here, um, you know, there were some things wrong and I had to fix that. So uh, let's just first go over the snowblower. So this, uh, by the way, is a three-stage Cub Cadet snowblower and it's 26 inch and it does have the tracks. I'm trying to block the wind. So Hopefully it's not going to be noisy. Uh, it does have, what I really love about it is it has a six LED headlight in the front. So you've got your light right there in the front. In the past you would only see like one in the middle, um, which is blocked by the chute a lot of times. But, and, but this one's got two on the side also. I think there's three LEDs in there. I'm not really sure. It's kind of hard to tell with the reflectors in there. Uh, but you definitely have a nice six LED right in the front. So that should be really good. And um, so this is, you know, stage one. The augers pull it towards the center, and then this this one pushes it towards the back, and then the impeller in the back, of course, shoots it up out of the the chute there. And um, it does have? I'm really sorry about the wind if it's getting into the video much. You know, the shave plate at the bottom, you know, is removable and a little bit adjustable. It has the little adjustable skids on it which I don't think those really come into contact with the pavement too much because if you adjust it down you're going to have the skid plate against the ground um, or you can have it raised up a little bit like this that's the other thing um, I'll show you how to adjust that in a second and by the way I have fluid film sprayed in here so fluid film is a lan lanolin based um, 
rust prevention and uh, lubricant. And uh, that stuff is, I swear, it's magic. Ever since I heard about it on the uh, landscaping forums, you know, the commercial lawn mowing, lawn mowing guys, um, it's, I use it on everything. It's a dielectric, which means you can spray it into electrical connectors, which I have done. Uh, so I like to do stuff like that. These electrical connectors, just take them apart and spray the fluid film in there and uh, put them back together. So, you know, it's not conducting electricity. So even if you have overflow between the different connections, you know, it's fine. Just put it back together. And um, that'll help prevent any corrosion in there. You know, I'll probably spray the backsides of these two. Now this snowblower is going to rest in my garage, which is heated and cooled, obviously, or my basement, actually. And um, so it's going to have an easy life when it's not being used outside. Um, so let me show you the fluid film real quick. It comes in gallon cans or even five gallon buckets where you can give, get in a 55 gallon drum. And the stuff in the cans, um, the bucket and the, the drum, is much thicker than this. This is the aerosol version, which you can spray easily on stuff like that, you know, on the augers and so on. It comes has a little ball in there, you just shake it up really good. Um, but what it does, you know, it, it protects from rust and uh, lubricates and um, you can just kind of see that it's kind of shiny there. That's where I sprayed it. And I even put it on things like, well, inside the chute here too, um, where this metal chute goes on top of the plastic um, outlet. Uh, that is plastic. I kind of wish it was metal, but I don't know if they put plastic there in a, for a specific reason. You know, if something's stuck in there and it can blow out the plastic instead of getting stuck and damaging something more important inside, but it does have the shear pins. It's something I want to talk about. Um, some complaints I've seen on Cub Cadet's website. I just want to go over some things that I think might be happening. People complaining about stuff that they don't really, you know, they don't fully understand what's going on. And so maybe it's not a fair complaint. So let's start over here. This is the, for the heated hand grips. Obviously each hand grip is heated. There's wires that go to them. And I turned it on for a few minutes and they do get pretty, pretty good and hot. Uh, the idea is that you're wearing gloves and they tell you to wear gloves in the manual and uh, say if, you know, if your hands are getting too hot, turn it off. But you'll have this down and uh, this would be for the auger and on the right side, this is for the drive. So as soon as you start pushing this down, you're gonna go forward or backwards depending on where you have your drive selector. Um, one of the complaints I've seen, and this happened to me when I got it, um, if you go, you know, there's six forward speeds and uh, if you notice when you do that, it's connected to this rod and this rod goes down here. So when I move that, this is reverse all the way back. So that lifts up. So when you go back, like that's six gear all the way down and you can tell it's spring loaded, it wants to go down. And when you pull it all the way back, that's gonna be reverse two. So what I found is when I was in reverse one, it actually was trying to go forward and it did go forward. <laughs> Um, so I had to take this rod off. This rod does not is not connected when you get it in the crate. You know, the, the, again, this is buying it from the factory. Actually, I need to tighten that. That nut has come loose from the vibration. So um, this just held in with a little cotter pin here. And um, so this comes off and you screw the nut, the nut down and then you can spin the, the upper part here to take it up higher. Actually, you want to take it down lower, so that'll tighten it up and pull this, pull this up higher down here. So the idea is you want that to go higher, so you tighten it up to pull it higher, and that that would get you a better reverse speed and uh, eliminate the problem of it trying to go forward in R1. You know, again, when I first got it, put it in R1, it was actually trying to go forward. So I tightened that up, and now it actually goes in reverse in R1 and it goes quicker in reverse in R2 like it should. So that's one thing that, um, you know, that was a problem at the factory. Again, this rod, these handlebars, at the, when you get it in the crate, um, two of these bolts will be in, you know, one over here and one over here. And the other two, I think it was the top ones maybe, actually probably these in the bottom, um, are not connected. They're just through the the handlebars and um, slightly screwed in. So the idea is you take the bolts out and you raise it up because you have, this will be, this part will be way down here somewhere kind of folded up and you go ahead and raise it up and you put the bolts in. 
so that's one part and this rod will be connected down here but it won't be connected up here so you'll have to put you know put this in so basically you put it in six gear so it's got all the slack off of it you know so it's easier to get to so what I did was basically um, you know again I loosen this nut and screw this part up farther so it was more snug I think it's to the point where there's just a little bit of tension on it right now and again goes all the way back into R2 and actually goes in reverse well now uh, this here this is for the the uh, turning the chute left or right if you want to spin it you see it turning over there so if you spin to the right clockwise it's going to go to the right left So this actually, this is another piece that's not installed from the factory. So all you have to do is insert it there and put the pin in there. And over here, you see it just goes right here. It's just really super simple. It just just goes right in there. And again, that's another spot where I put a bunch of fluid film. Anything that's moving, put that in there. So that's just a nice stiff, um, flexible rod. And again, counterclockwise, I'll turn it left, turn it to the right. And uh, the other thing here, this one, this handle, will control the uh, the tip of the chute. You know, if you want to throw the snow higher or down low, you know, throw it lower. So basically, you know, you just push over to the left and go up and down. Pretty simple. If you're not using it all year when you're not snow blowing, I would position it somewhere like that because you don't want to, you know, in my case, I don't want to leave it with this kink in there all winter long or all summer long you know I just assume pull it back to where it's uh, kind of straight out that where you don't have much pressure on just to make everything last longer um, so again this is for the heated hand handle hand grips again this is for the auger I'll show you that when we get it started and again this is for the drive and um, there's no on off switch there is this little plug here that you can remove I think if you just pull it if you push push it all the way in you're ready to go ready to start it it'll run if you pull it just a little bit out I think that'll stop it um, but the, usually you just leave that in and um, this is the throttle you know fast and then slow uh, but as you get all the way over to the right that actually kill the engine so there must be a kill wire in there somewhere uh, this is the primer bulb so you just press that several times there's a hole in the middle so just put your finger over the top press it three or four times get it primed maybe some more if it's been sitting around a while um, there's a pull start here there's a really big handle on it so that's really nice um, and then over here on the top is the choke so this is unchoked no choke at all and it has three positions for choke so that basically uh, chokes it right there and I did find even when it's kind of warm out like this that I had to choke it fully for a minute or so and then you you know as you hear it start to run rough you can kind of go back towards where it's unchoked and finally totally unchoked if it's not warm enough yet when you're unchoked you'll hear the engine start to run kind of rough and surging and so on um, the oil is here just make sure you double check that from the factory you get it as level as you can um, because that does, um, well, that's important. Just make sure that it's full of oil. Um, there's a line on there. You know, you check the, the fill line between those two dots. At the top top dot, it should be should be oil at the top dot. But, I mean, you probably know how to check oil. Um, just make sure you check that. Fuel cap, it holds a little over a gallon, not too much more. It's kind of a nice cap that uh, clicks when you get it tight. And it does have electric start, but it's a little deceiving because you hear electric start and you may say, well, okay, it's a battery start. Uh, there is no battery start. There's no battery on it. Um, I'm not really familiar with this. I've never really seen these like this, but apparently it's a thing. So it's got the electric outlet here, depending on where you live. You know, it could be a 220 outlet like a, you know, in Europe. But this is the um, US and um, I think Japan basically has the same connection for electric uh, 110 volts. But um, Basically, you get one of those female extension cords, you know, the extension, the female end of it, and plug it in here. And, um, you know, this would be simulating some kind of device you're plugging into the end of an uh, extension cord. 
and um, once you get that plugged in, plug the other end into the electric outlet, then you just press that to start it. You know, and of course, make sure your your uh, throttle is on. You know, to where it's not off. You know, about halfway. I wouldn't start it like. I don't know why people start an engine that's cold three quarters or full, full throttle. I just don't see any point in it. I would probably just go halfway and you know even a quarter and then uh, choke it, fully choke it and prime it and it should start right up. So there's that and this here, this handle on the right side actually controls the height of the, the um, snow blower in the front. So right now it's a couple inches off the ground which would be good for going through grass or like even on the gravel uh, with the snowblower going, you know, the auger's going, you don't want to pick up gravel and start throwing it out to shoot and hitting cars and people and, and breaking the shear pins in your, uh, on your augers. Uh, so I may use, I'll probably use that setting, depends on how much snow we have. Usually if it's bad enough that I have to use something like a snowblower or a shovel in my driveway, the gravel part, uh, then, you know, it's going to be deep enough that even in the highest setting it'll be good enough to, to get it out of there. There's Mr. Cicada by the way. If you hear all that buzzing in the background, it's from these cicadas. Oops, these are the 17 year cicadas. They come out uh, every 17 years. They live underground for um, 17 years as some kind of larva and um, like a oh, like, like some kind of grub or whatever. And then 17 years later, these things pop out of the ground, they get their wings, they fly around for about six weeks and mate, and then they dig their little butts in the branches and uh, small branches on trees and lay their eggs and then they're done. Uh, they could damage, damage small trees, but you know, it's usually not too bad. It's just um, those little slits they put in them. So anyway, this, there's four positions. The very top is the highest. And uh, I would probably be snow blowing on the concrete in this second to lowest position. Uh, that way, the front um, plate, uh, what do they call that? There's a term for it. I can't remember right now. But anyway, that metal plate that contacts the, the concrete or blacktop to scrape it, um, that would probably be fine right there. Uh, but they do say if you go all the way down to one, you might have to force it down. Um, and that's where you're going to be really forcing that metal plate into the ground. So like if you've got ice or something. So transport all the way up in the top there, just driving it around. And while I'm here, I'll talk about these tracks. And this one thing I want to talk about people have complained about on Cub Cadet's website and the reviews, um, these plastic wheels. Um, I assume they're talking about these wheels breaking and they're not very thick if you look at them. So, you can get a good look at it there. These these are not very thick. Uh, it's plastic with a little bit of a rubbery surface on the on the outside of it. I, I think personally, what's happening is people are being kind of rough with these. I mean, I, I just don't see how this is going to break if you're just driving it on flat pavement. Um, but if you're like bouncing it off of steps or something, trying to get it down steps or off of rocks, you know, like some kind of ledge, and you drop it down on these plastic wheels you might end up damaging the wheels or breaking one I, you know it, obviously when it's cold um, things are more brittle and um, that's just something to keep in mind if you if you need something like you're going to use commercially and um, you're really being rough with it i would definitely recommend maybe to sticking with the regular uh, air inflated tires and not using the track i'm on the hill over here and it's you know pretty much pretty easy to do and i don't really have any re reason to beat this around too much so i, I don't really expect i'm gonna have any problem with that and by the way, getting the tracks off to replace a wheel or something like that should be pretty simple. Um, there's a tensioner right here, which I think you could probably put a wrench on there and um, put pressure on it and it'll take pressure off of the tensioner. I think more importantly, over here, if you look, there's like a J hook with a you know, nut on the end of it. And it holds this bar, which is where the rear set of um, wheels are, you know, these right here. I think basically you just take that nut off of each side and then you take that J bolt and let it go all the way forward then you can push that rod forward push these wheels forward and it probably loosen up really easy to get these tracks off and these tracks are not really like super stiff or anything They're kind of rubbery it's like a rubber material so all I can say is for now driving up a, a really steep part of my 
uh, yard and the grass works you know just fine or I have no problem at all with it um, but getting it out on the snow I mean it does have more of a surface area it should do really well on my flat driveway out there the concrete um, it's another spot for the oil I'm not sure why they give you that one because you're going to put oil in the top and then there's going to be um, oil drain here which is super simple it's going to drain right out here so you don't make a big mess or anything uh, let's see if there's anything I haven't really talked about here I think that's pretty much it for here it's really simple up underneath here everything's really easy to get to so I think simple repairs should be easy if you need to get into anything inside there it's going to be more difficult um, I think you have to flip the machine up and take that bottom part off one thing I want to talk about down here was something that, again, from the factory wasn't quite right. Uh, this bolt on top on the right side is, it only goes in so far and that's the way it's supposed to. So don't try to over tighten this, it's already tightened where it should be for this to slide up and down. But this bolt on the bottom was loose and what that's for is adjusting this small cable that's for, that drives it. So when you, if I reach up here, you see that moving and I pulled it, pull down on the drive handle uh, lever, you see that moving. And the more you push it down, the tighter it's going to get. So you don't want to go down too far with it and have it start to want to, you know, take off on its own without even pushing the handle down. Uh, so this wasn't even tightened up. So I, that's kind of a something I kind of ding them for that. They should have tightened that up. This one on the right side was tight, and this one's the opposite. So this one is preset. You can't tighten that anymore, or you shouldn't. This one is the only one you're supposed to tighten up to snug it up and keep it from moving. On this side, uh, it's the bottom one that's that's um, kind of only goes in so far. You're not supposed to drive it in anymore, so don't force it. And this one's the one that should be totally tightened down. And uh, these these are plastic. These little pulleys on here. So I I don't really like that too much. I'd rather that be a metal pulley. I'm not sure why they did that. Again, I sprayed them down really good with fluid film. And this is a metal wire coated in plastic. Uh, and speaking of, actually there are a couple of things I missed back here. Um, one other thing from the factory that I noticed was not right. You see this, uh, where the cable connects to the handle. It's, you know, a flat part, kind of got has a curve on it, and then goes through the handle. I don't know if you can see that in there. Goes through the handle, and, um, and then it's supposed to that holds it in there it's just kind of like a sort of like an s shape but it was pushed too far in there and so this this piece was kind of like sticking straight out and that was going to prematurely ruin this cable so i had to straighten it out myself with a pair of needle nose pliers uh, so that was a little bit aggravating that they didn't have that right from the factory uh, these are there's one on each side. If you squeeze this, it's supposed to turn right. You squeeze the other one, it's supposed to turn left. You don't squeeze them both at the same time. Um, it's not like a zero turn machine, but that's kind of the idea. And from my experience, it's not really strong. I don't know what's going on, but it's, you know, it will turn. But you, I found that you kind of had to work it a little bit, you know, just kind of like press it and let go, press, let go, and it'll just kind of doop, 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 you know, kind of uh, bump it to the right. For whatever reason, if I just pull that in and hold it, you would think it'd be kind of like a, you know, a tracked vehicle, like a tank or a, a bulldozer, where if you stop the right wheel, the left wheel is going to, or the left track is going to force it to turn right. But it doesn't really stop the right track. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a stop, and it's enough to nudge you to the right. But point being is, I don't know if there's some way to adjust that. I don't see any obvious place to adjust it. But um, it will turn, you just kind of nudge it a little bit. And I would definitely make sure you're really familiar with this before you get anywhere near somebody's car, garage, whatever, uh, person. Um, because, you know, it's a little awkward to get used to pressing this down to go and stop. So if you want to stop, basically, you just let go of it. That's going to stop. Um, and again, this is just for the auger. So if you push this down, and I'm, you know, it'll come back up without holding the right one down. But if you, like, I'll push this right one down. You can't see it, but I'm pushing it down. Trust me. And then you push this down. 
it'll stay. So now the auger's on, and you can keep holding that down while you let the other one back up. So you can keep the auger running, which I don't know why you would really if you're stopped, uh, but you can if you want to. But once you start going, then you can, you know, with this one still held down, you can reach over with your left hand and push that down. Now it's going to have the auger going. All right, so let's go around the other side here. So again, these are the two cables that come up here just to position the top of the chute to, you know, throw the snow higher or lower. Um, again, this is the piece that comes back that gets spun by this, which makes the chute go left and right. So you can throw the chute and go snow over here or to the other side. Um, I kind of got them to where they should, you know, fit more comfortably and, you know, so they're not kinked at all. And I just kind of wire tied them to the, these loops here and here, not totally necessary, but these cables were farther back and behind this rod. I didn't really like it like that. So I took them from behind the rod and I just have this little loop hanging down, but it's not a big deal. Um, put a little piece of Velcro around there and, uh, pushed them forward and just kind of wire tied them to keep them kind of nice and neat. So there's that. Um, as far as the air cleaner, where is the air cleaner on this? The carburetor is under here, or as Terrell Dactyl would say on the Terrell Fixes All channel, the carburetor. Uh, gotta be under there somewhere. I assume you're gonna take these bolts off here to look that up, because there's gotta be a relatively simple way. It looks, looks like there's not to get the air cleaner. So it's probably gonna be a few bolts to get that out. Um, they do give you a little shovel for clearing out the chute or in the front of the snowblower. This kind of goes right there. Like I said, this one came with the front headlight, so I love that. And uh, that cable just goes down there. It is belt driven, the belts are under here. And I have no idea how hard that's going to be to ever change the belt, but I imagine it's not going to be super fun. And uh, now for the shear pins. I've seen complaints of people, and i even seen some guy on YouTube doing it. Um, they would be complaining about the snowblower basically just pushing the snow instead of <laughs> pulling it in and throwing it. But you just really have to be sure that these shear pins are in place. So, I mean, there's one here. There's one over here. There's one over here on this side for this auger. Uh, there's one there. And I think the one, I don't think there's anything on the impeller in the very back. But you've definitely got one, two, three, four. So you definitely need to make sure that all of those are intact and basically they shouldn't move. You know, it shouldn't be able to just spin freely if you've got your shear pin in there. Uh, so I think people you know, the one guy on YouTube, he was driving along trying to do the snow throwing and, um, you know, it's kind of running in the same position where, same thing where the uh, snow was just kind of getting pushed and wasn't really throwing it too well. And that's because the shear pin was broke. And a shear pin could broke if you hit a piece of ice that's too hard. I mean, the idea is that you don't want to damage your, your gearbox. So you sacrifice a, you know, a $1 shear pin. You can get these all day long on Amazon really cheap. There's a place to store a couple extras back here. I wish they had two more spots to have four of them, but you can put put one here. There's there's a spare right there. Just pull the pin out and you've got it with you. And another one here. So it's just one on each side. That's just an extra shear pin, a place to store those. So if you're out blowing snow somewhere, you don't have to go back to the garage or wherever to get your shear pin. And these are pretty easy to get out. What I do is uh, just twist that, the edge of it twist it up a little bit and then you can push it out or you can um, take that and pull it because see how it's got that little uh, the end of it if you just try to pull it straight out it's going to get stuck and not go anywhere so you have to kind of twist it a little bit and then pull it out and that's what she said <laughs> nope you don't have to twist it <laughs> uh, sorry about that yeah they don't put the uh, horsepower ratings on these engines anymore some of them do, like uh, my John Deere zero turn mower has a horsepower rating listed on the engine. But uh, a lot of these, they just give you the, the engine size instead of um, the actual horsepower rating. I guess there was some controversy in the past about how companies are rating the horsepower on engines. So they just 
I guess they basically said screw it and they just put the um, displacement on there. Uh, it does recommend 5W30 motor oil. Um, should be fine because um, you're not you're, you know you're not going to be having it out in the middle of summer running it around. No, I am just to show you. So that's basically it. Um, I just think if there's anything else that I had to do or adjust before we get started, I'll just start it up and probably not going to run it. I don't have my tripod out here with me, but um, I think that's about it. I did kind of neaten things up a little bit, put a piece of Velcro around here just to keep that wire out of the way. I believe that is it. Talked about this, this, talked about all these controls underneath there. And uh, so yeah, we'll just start it up and what I'm gonna do is take this shoestring, wrap it around the auger, and I'll just show you what the, the auger looks like when it's moving in the front. So you see the different uh, different stages. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let me get it started before I put the auger down, or put the, uh, turn the auger on. So again, just uh, turn the throttle up a little bit. It's already warm, so I shouldn't need to choke it. Or I may need to. Uh, by the way, this is a Cub Cadet engine. Uh, it's not Kawasaki, Briggs and Stratton, or anything else. Um, from what I've read, uh, Cub Cadet partnered with a Chinese company to make these. And uh, you say what you will about them. I mean, they make iPhones in China. Depends on what specs you give them. You know, they could make junk for you, or they can make a high-quality product for you. It depends on what you what you spec out. And hopefully, Cub Cadet spec out a nice engine for this. Um, so far, I mean, it looks fine to me. It starts really easy. Um, just make sure you choke it when it needs to be choked. And it fires right up. And um, we'll see how it goes this winter. So once once the snow comes, now you watch it'll, after buying this, uh, which these run with delivery um, right around $2,000. So after buying this, <laughs> I'll probably just get a dusting of snow this year and just have to use my backpack blower. I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to get this out for a dusting. Um, this is so quick and easy. I mean, if I have an inch or so, I might run this around just to, you know, because I have it now. I have to play around with it a little bit, right? So, I believe that's it. And uh, hopefully uh, the focus was fine. I see that it's um, saying spot focus now. I must have touched the screen. I hope it's, uh, hope the autofocus was working right when I did this. Now if I get all the way through this and start watching it and it's out of focus, I'm going to be really mad. Alright, well thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful.